Hi guys, my name is Owen and I'm going to tell you about Class In. This is a new platform that we are going to use to teach our private students. Um, we will send you this website so that you can download the platform. Uh, you have to come to this website and simply select which one applies to your computer and download the program. Now I've already gone ahead and done that and opened it up and logged in. Obviously we will send you your username and password so you can log in. Uh, when you do log in you will come to this page which says welcome to use class in. So by here is where you will see all of the classes that you will have to teach that day. If you see no classes it means there are no classes. Pretty simple. And by here is a blackboard editor. This allows you to enter an empty classroom without students and play around with all of the functions by yourself. So by here we have a settings page which allows you to do some things, check for updates, uh, check and see if um, all of the functions are working properly. Just um, the, the only things you need to focus on on this page is what you see by here in terms of classes you teach and the Blackboard editor before you enter the class if you want to try some things out. So let's go ahead and enter this class as we've opened this up so that we can show you how we use the platform. So after you have, okay, I'll go ahead and mute these so the sound is quiet. Um, so after you've obviously checked to see um, if your camera is working, you can hear things and your voice is being uh, identified, um, you will enter the platform like this. Um, when you do arrive, usually in most scenarios, the students won't be here, the students being these people. So you would just be by yourself, basically, um, a few minutes before the class begins. So before the class begins, the first thing you're probably wondering is, oh, where is my uh, PBT? What, what am I teaching? Uh, with class in, you are responsible for uploading that before the students arrive. Um, so what you will do is you'll just go down to here, which is the cloud disk. Click and you will see the PBTs, the videos or any multimedia files that you will need for this class. So let's click. Okay, lovely Chinese PPT. Oh, there you go. So this is the PPT that I would be teaching these students by here. So let's say they've just arrived. There are many things you can do uh, with class in. A little bit complicated, but it's uh, very um, interesting what you can do. One thing I would usually do at the start of my class is double click myself, double click the students and talk together. Hello, how are you? Good, excellent. And then you could give them a uh, award. A reward. Now, when I am usually teaching, I like to put my face by here and just teach like this. So the students can see the PPT and they can see me very clearly. And you can move the slides like this and you can adjust the size of yourself or the PBT to get that perfect fit but for me personally this works best me on the left PBT on the right and on the right hand side by here you can see there are many different functions uh, we will not get into detail with all of them because quite frankly most of them won't be needed in our classes and are not suitable for our classes so the ones which are suitable Obviously, the first one, which is basically a clicker, allows you to click, like so. The next one kind of works like the clicker as well, but it allows you to select, th select things, which I'll show you in a moment. The paintbrush, pretty much the same as our platform, allows you to paint things either in the background or on the PPT. Now, select. You can select and move it. 
or you can select and delete. Really simple. If you just draw and then press delete, it won't do anything. So make sure that you select delete. Now let's say you've um, made a huge mess all over your PBT. You've gone uh, wild. Okay. Now you want to delete multiple things. Instead of being like, uh, uh, basically use the select, drag, make a box, delete. Really simple. So we also have a type function. Be wary of the size, just to make sure the students can see what you are typing. And bear in mind, if you select something which is on this background space, it can't move on to the PPT. You would need to type it on the PPT, like so. Okay, so let's just delete those now. Now, we're not gonna get into most of these, so we have the, the clicker, the selector, the pen function, the type function. This function's for screenshotting, although I can't really imagine a situation where you would need to do it unless perhaps you wanted to assign a student a character, like so, maybe. But it's a little bit complicated to explain. It'd just be easier to say, oh, you are the mother and you are the little boy, like this. Um, yeah, so moving on from that, we obviously have the trash can, which I've already explained. We have a laser function. Now, the laser function, if you click it, now the students see this yellow dot. If you have this, the students don't see the mouse. So this can be useful instead of making a huge mess with the pen function. You can use this to ask students to read along with the tongue twister. Okay. Now, next we have a chat box. So we're not encouraging any of our teachers to use this chat box simply because it takes away from speaking and listening, practicing uh, conversational English. There may be times where the students will be typing in Chinese, saying all kinds of different things. Um, obviously, if there is a problem, for example, um, a student is very noisy or uh, the, the connection's bad and no one responds to you, you could obviously ask, can you hear me? Something like this. But we wouldn't want it to be a situation where it's like, how was your day? Cool. Like this. We're not looking for that sort of uh, use with this um chat box um, and you will see a little red uh, indicator to say you've received a message but if you see the messages in Chinese um, it's really a good idea just to continue with your teaching as opposed to say oh what are you saying I can't read Chinese well you could do that if it was fun um, but I think you see my uh, point so Cloud, I've already explained, this is where you will upload your video and your audio files. Unfortunately, by here, it doesn't show a video file for this lesson. Maybe I can find one somewhere else. Let's take a look. Oh, MP4. So yeah, you would click this and this is how the MP4 would look. By here. A video like so. Um, usually if there's a video I will minimize the oh, sorry I'm new to this as well I would try to minimize one of these and then make the video bigger just so the students can see what's going on in the video. I'm not sure what's going on in this video. Baltic rescue. Okay so this is obviously how the video works. Um, you have a pause function, volume, pretty simple. But when you're teaching your classes, authorized resources, if you don't find it by here, don't go looking for it. It basically means there is no video for this lesson. So let's bring back the PPT. Sorry. As you can see, I'm uh, 
fairly new to this also. Okay, so let's move on through the lesson and let's say there's some kind of conversation. Um, if you wanted it to be a pair work, if this was a pair work slide, what I would usually do is I'd get all of the students to speak and then I'd ask for a volunteer to get involved. So I'd simply drag the student and then me and the student could do a pair work together. So many photos on the wall. Who are they? And then the student would say something. And then what I could do then is I could send myself back and then I could let two students talk together. And, you know, if there was three students, you would just swap one, bring one in. Swap one, bring one in. So they can continually do pair work. So you kind of have more control of it than you would in other scenarios like the um, public school classes where you're kind of just like this, waiting for one to raise their hand. Um, obviously, one of the students, sometimes when I ask questions using this platform, they do put their hands up and just go, oh, teacher. And then if that student does it, I would, uh, sorry. I would, if a student did that, I would drag them onto the screen. So yeah, as you can see, class, uh, class in is a little bit um, technical in terms of lots of different things that can be used. And I definitely need more practice as well. So moving down, we have this teaching tools, which I basically call the toolbox. Um, there's lots of different things that you can uh, do inside of here, but the only two that we want you to use are the timer, if necessary. This allows you to set a time. Oh, so noisy. This allows you to set a time that the students can see. Perhaps it's a game, uh, some kind of activity which requires them to have a certain period of time to complete it. And then another function is the classic dice, which we're all familiar with on uh, the Class 100 platform. So you can use this just to roll a dice if there's a game or activity. And one thing that I always do with the dice function is if I want a student to do it, I'll be like, can you do this? Go. And then as soon as the student throws it, I click it. And that's kind of fun for the students and gets them involved. So these are the two um, little functions that we would like you to use when necessary, according to our PPTs, the timer and the dice. The other ones, um, for example, there's one here, which is load an image from your computer, things like this. They just eat away at the actual class. And we would much rather you be focusing on getting the students talking than, you know, looking for your computer and uploading, I don't know, a little puppy or something just to show them. Um, of course, you can do that if time remains, but the objective is obviously speaking and listening, conversational English, talking together, um, interacting as much as possible. So one of the cool things that you can do is award students points or rewards, as I mentioned earlier. And you can see by here how many you are giving. And by here we have a function which allows you to authorize a student. So when you authorize a student, it basically means they have the ability to do things on the computer screen. So if you stay here, I'm gonna go back and I'll show you what I can do as the student. Hello, and now I am here. So the teacher has given me a crown, which allows me now as the student to draw on the screen. And I can also type things on the screen. 
but those are the only functions that I can use if I have the crown on my screen. Okay, so student Owen has made a huge mess because I let him have the ability to draw. To stop him from making more of a mess, basically click the crown and then he can no longer make drawings and things on the screen. The only problem with that is I now have to clean up his mess, which I'm going to do now. Okay, delete. So this function, we will use this function quite a lot for asking students to draw things, pick generic, following a race or a line and saying vocabulary words, jumping over things. So this is a function that you can use a lot. Just remember, it is quite easy to forget the crown. And if you have a naughty student in your class, you're going to have a problem. Um, just so you know, um, obviously this is to mute or mute or unmute the students. If you have a student which is making a huge amount of noise, perhaps it's just like a or it's so loud that it's disrupting all of the other students, just mute them. They can still hear you and when you want them to speak, you would just drag them, oh sorry, if you uh, want them to speak, you could just drag them onto the screen and now it's activated by here so they can speak. And then once they're done, very good, excellent, good job, mute. If the noise is extremely bad, I'll just give you an example. There was one student, he was using his uh, mobile phone to have a class, but he was outside and the wind was, and all of the other students were doing this. So just bear that in mind. And also remember if you mute them, just so uh, when you try to ask them all a question, if they're all muted, um, they won't respond. So the one thing we don't want you to do is press this button. So if I press this button, I basically kick them out of the classroom. And the only way to get them back is to go here, you see some things and click here. Um, we can't think of a reason why you would press this, so we're, we're obviously not going to suggest you to use it at all. Um, we have the reward function, obviously use this, use this when necessary, and use this when it's necessary on the PBT. Um, down here in the corner is a hand. Um, remember I showed you earlier the students could put up their hand. On their end, they may either use their real hand or they have a mouse button which they can press and you'll see a hand, like a cartoon hand, appear here. So that's all of the functions that we would like you to use um, inside our class in classrooms. And if you do have any questions, please let myself know, Michelle or anyone else. And hopefully looking forward to seeing you teach with us on this platform. Thank you. Bye-bye.